Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be your general collective tarot reading, yeah? Please keep in mind this is a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is a timeless reading, yeah? This really does not meant to be for any one time period. However, what I wanna talk about today does have a bit of a time sensitivity energy to it because it's we're going to be talking about what happened over the weekend um, but this really can still resonate for you at any time right and even if you're watching this like weeks later you're like wait which weekend are you talking about exactly don't worry about it um, just take it as it resonates you guys it's a general reading and it's a timeless reading also okay <clears throat> excuse me um, happy Monday I hope you guys had a good weekend uh, I am going through or I have been going through a bit of it's been it's been a weekend it's been a really intense weekend for me um so we're gonna get into that so that does mean that there's gonna be a bit of story time I do recommend that you guys listen to story time because story time is going to be directly related to what we're gonna be talking about or at least what, what our focus will be for the reading okay so I highly recommend that you take the time to listen to what story time is today, and then we'll get into the reading. But then as always, you will find timestamps in the description box and the pinned comment below, just to make it easier to navigate the situation, the, the reading. And also, please make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I love hearing from you guys, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so, what happened this weekend, this past weekend? Well, uh, on Friday, we did have the new moon. Was it Friday? It was either, uh, I don't remember the actual day, uh, but it was the 9th, the 9th of July. We had the new moon. Depending on which system you resonate with, it was either in Cancer for the tropical system or Gemini for the sidereal system. Both of those signs have really, I mean, it, it really depends on your perspective. So if you're looking at it from tropical point of view, the new moon was in Cancer, which has a lot to do with the body, a lot to do with the home, family, and all that kind of stuff. If it was, if we're looking at it from the sidereal point of view, it was in Gemini. Gemini is the sign of the twins. And for me specifically, as a reader, um, and as part of this collective, a lot of us have been going through a lot of um, ascension symptoms or situations that are helping us come into greater alignment, greater union within ourselves. And Gemini represents the, 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 the two energies involved with that between, you know, the masculine and the, and the feminine. Uh, Gemini is the sign of the twins. So either way, regardless as to which, uh, which system you resonate with most, this is all energy that has been helping facilitate union for us. And that union is definitely, you know, eventually will definitely be reflected in the external reality in terms of union with a specific partner, <clears throat> a specific individual or whatnot, whatever. Um, but also that union needs to happen in, within first. And so there's been a lot of purging, um, a lot of ascension a lot of a, a lot of those energies took place over the weekend now the big thing for me what really caught my attention was the schumann resonance on the ninth spiked like super 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 spiked and it was right on time right in alignment with the new moon which to me it's kind of mind-blowing um, and I experienced some pretty extreme symptoms of it all weekend. I'm still kind of feeling it right now. It, today is Monday, but um, I'm still feeling it a little bit in terms of like my headspace and my mind. Those of you that, you know, those of you that were following last week, you knew, you heard me talk about how, you know, I... I I have let go. I, I, I was going to say I finally released, but that's not the case. At this point, I have let go of uh, nicotine and cigarettes. Um, and that started around Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday or Thursday of last week. By the time 
Friday hit, I was over 24 hours into it. So my body was starting to detox and my lungs were starting to detox from the nicotine and the toxins and the chemicals and all that stuff. So that was a thing that I had been dealing with and you can still hear that in um, my cough, this awful cough that I have. <clears throat> but it's because it's all kind of breaking up. And in terms of that, let's talk about that for a second. Because in terms of that, you know, I like I said last week, I've been smoking cigarettes for a very long time. I started smoking cigarettes when I was 13 years old. I probably would have started earlier had I had I given the chance, had I been given the chance, but the opportunity really didn't present itself in my circle or in my life until I reached eighth or ninth grade. Um, <clears throat> and so I have been smoking ever since. And I've gone back and forth, you know, between smoking and not smoking and trying to quit and not smoking for months, but then like falling off and like, you know, getting, getting back in and blah, blah, blah. Um, and every time you do that, and many of you understand, you know, you've been there too, but, um, and you know that, you know, the first, they say the first three days are the worst, uh, because that's when you're really fighting the addiction and you're fighting the habit. Once you make it past those first three days, then things kind of start to get a bit easier and, but, but that's not even the point. The point that I'm trying to make is like, is after, after a while, your body starts to, like within the first 24 hours, once you hit that 24 hour mark, at least for me, that's when I feel like my body really starts to has, it really has the ability to really start to heal. Because that first 24 hours of not re-injecting your body with nicotine or any sort of chemical or whatnot, whatever, it starts to help you get in, your body get into the flow of releasing all of those toxins and clearing out the energy and clearing out the, the, the gross, the ick, right? Okay, so that's what's been happening. But this time, it's so much deeper. And this is why I want to talk about this with the collective. We, If you're over on Patreon, you know we've been talking about this all weekend. But um, at this point, you know, in retrospect, in hindsight, I'm able to really talk about what this could potentially mean for the larger group of the collective, right? Because I'm experiencing something way deeper and way more profound this time than I, than I think I ever have in terms of the healing that's coming into place um, for me specifically. And so I'm going to speak on it from my point of view, from my perspective, because that's really what I have. And then, you know, allow that to bounce through your situation and see how it resonates for you. And then we'll get into more of it when we um, get into the cards, right? Okay. <clears throat> so now there is a deeper element of healing that's happening this time. Um, and it has everything to do, Spirit is saying, it has everything to do with the Schumann Resonance that spiked on Friday. Um, this is a major time of ascension for us. And we are in the process of shift, of, of moving towards the 8-8 eight, eight portal or the Lion's Gate portal, which is in August, August 8th. Um, and that kind of kicked off on the 7-7 seven, seven portal which was, uh, and there's actually, hold on. Sorry guys, I wanted to, um, I wanted to write this down so that uh, I remember when I do the editing before I post it later, uh, post it for you guys to see, but there is a video that I really, really recommend that you guys check out. It's all about the 7-7 seven, seven, um, portal and the Syrian portal that we crossed through on the 7th. Um, and it's a video from Conscious Consciousness. Oh, shoot. I see, man. And I did this specifically so that I wouldn't butcher your name. I'm so sorry, Cassia. I know your name is Cassia, but um, it's Cosmic. There we go. Cosmic Consciousness with Cassia. The a card to that reading can be found right up here. I'll also post it, I'll post a link to that in the description box along with the timestamps and in the pinned comment below along with the timestamps there. Yeah, definitely check out that reading because I watched it, I think it was Friday. It was Thursday or Friday when I watched it. 
excuse me, and she was talking about all of the activations that were happening as we were crossing through the Syrian gateway, um, uh, uh, crossing over the Syrian, uh, the, 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 crossing over that, crossing through that portal, that gateway. And everything that she was talking about was exactly what I was experiencing. And it was making so much freaking sense, you guys. So I, I highly recommend that you check that out because there's a lot of great information in that one. Cassia is awesome. I mean, like, she and I are vibing real cool. Like, she's great. I love her. She's awesome. Um, and so we're, we crossed through that, right? And that was kind of like the preliminary, the, 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 the starter, the primer that's getting us ready for this uh, Lion's Gate portal in August. So that happened. That and and that kind of energy, that that energy was like between like the seventh and the ninth, right? Just that window of opportunity to go through that that shift and experience that energy. Then the ninth hit, which was the new moon, either in Cancer or Gemini, depending on which system you resonate with, or that which you follow. Maybe you follow both. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> which was a pretty strong energy anyway. It's a new moon, so this was a great time for to be to 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 maybe to be cleansing, to be clearing, to be healing, um, maybe to be putting implementing or putting new things into place, um, new systems, new 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 approaches, new new theories, whatever. Starting something new, okay? Um, or at, well, not, well, starting something new in terms of getting the ball rolling, putting something into place, right? Getting something started. But then on top of that, on the ninth, the Schumann resonance spiked. And let me tell you, y'all, when I tell you that shit knocked me off my fucking ass, yo, I was out of commission all weekend. Now, first of all, on top of the fact that, that my body is, is detoxing from nicotine, right? Um, and so I definitely, I felt it 24 hours into that, man, I started to feel the symptoms because I, I felt my lungs, I, there was one point I was sitting at the, at my computer where, and all of a sudden I just felt something pop, break open, like in my lungs. And I was like, oh shit, here we go. The healing has started. <laughs> <clears throat> the healing has started, right? Okay. And then as time went on throughout the rest of that day, and then even into the next day, I started to feel the flu-like symptoms that come with a detox, right? Okay, makes perfect sense. But on top of that, when the Schumann resonance spiked, the migraines came. And the, here's the thing about it, because I was feeling the migraines and the weird energy in my head days prior to this actually happening. It was a few weeks before what okay so i know i know i'm feeling ill or i've got like a cold or something's going on when i get a very specific migraine and it's this shooting pain in like the back right it's like the back right sinus cavity of my skull i'm sorry the back left it's like there's a bolt of lightning going through that cavity and it's it is extremely painful you guys and it's it and it's like what makes it worse is that it happens randomly. You can't predict it. And it just, it just, all of a sudden you'll just, I'll just get this like extreme flash of pain in that spot. And I had been feeling that for a while, uh, intermittently, ever so often, every once in a while, I was like, wow, am I getting sick? But nothing else really came through. It wasn't until um, I really released cigarettes that, you know, the flu symptoms started to come through. <clears throat> but then on top of that, um, I knew I knew a shift was happening for the collective. I knew we were going through a, an upgrade because I have, and I still have this weird, this sensation in my head, not gonna lie, but I had this really weird shifty sensation in my head. And I, I think I explained this a little bit before, but I'll explain it again. It's like vertigo. Now, I don't really know what vertigo is like. I've never really had vertigo. I don't get motion sickness and I don't get car sickness, like, and, and, or, nor do I get seasick or anything like that. And um, I used to be a dancer, so like, I'm really good with you know, you know, doing pirouettes where you have to like spot and everything and like hold it, like, like that's fine for me. I, that was never an issue, but this sensation is weird. And the only thing I can think of is it's like it's vertigo. It's like things are spinning, but they're not. It's not like when, you know, you get drunk and the room starts to spin. 
It's just things are weird. It's like they're kind of like they're spin e, they're spin like. It's it's such a weird thing to describe, but it's like somebody's coming and knocking on my head. Like I can I can. It's like a, you know, that kind of, it's weird, you guys. I don't really even know how to explain it. But it's like the energy is shifting. The, the, something, is, something is shifting in my head. And that was also leading to the migraines. And, and, and so what's happening, what, what, yes, what is happening in this time is we are definitely shifting timelines. And the funniest thing about that was I, a few weeks ago, I was driving down the mountain. I don't remember what I was going to do. I think I might have been going to run errands or something. I was driving down the mountain and all of a sudden it felt like the energy just jumped. I was like, what the? <laughs> the hell was that? And I'm thinking to myself, Eric, you just shifted timelines. I'm like, what? Yeah, dude, straight up. You just shifted timelines. And that's never, that's never consciously happened to me before. But I remember it specifically. I was driving along just going about my business and I just felt everything shift. It's like I jumped. Like for a split second, I jumped into a, a new energy. And that's when all of this weird shifty stuff started to happen. And then the Schumann resonance hit right on top of the new moon. We are shifting timelines, you guys. This is a major event taking place. And because of this shift in timelines, there is a lot of deep, deep, deep healing that's coming because of this. Let's circle back to with me not smoking cigarettes, releasing nicotine. Like I was saying earlier, I've been here before. I've done this a few times. And, you know, I always like, wow, this is, I, I, I always really like the moment, the, the, the moment when my, when like all the gook in my lungs starts to break up because I'm weird like that. And like, I, I have this weird obsession with a, with a wet cough. It's, I know that's disgusting, but <clears throat> it's thrilling for me because it feels, because it's, it, okay. Because it's connected to the fact that I, I'm not a masochist. Like I don't like being in pain, but if I have a cut or an injury, I like the sensation of healing. Like um, I don't know. I, I don't know. I just like the feeling of when something is healing. I don't like the, the pain of getting injured, but I like the sensation of, of something healing, like a cut healing or something. You know what I mean? I, because I know I'm healing. Also, like when I was a dancer, I loved being sore because number one, because it told me that I... I was doing the work, you know, and my body was changing. My body was growing. My body was adapting. My muscles are getting bigger and all that kind of stuff. Like I loved that sensation. I hated stretching, but I loved the pain of, of being sore, right? Because I enjoyed the healing aspect of it. And so that's kind of why I was always excited when like I would have this gross wet cough because it's like, yeah, get all that gook out of there, right? But this time it is so deep, so deep that I like almost can't breathe. <laughs> um, <clears throat> like it's, it's hard for me to talk so much right now and, and keep, because, because there's so, so much physical healing that's happening. And I do feel, I do kind of feel like this might be a little bit of an effect of COVID just because, I mean, I never really actually got COVID or experienced anything major. But I do remember um, while I was still in Brooklyn last year, before I moved here to Puerto Rico, I think one of my roommates may have come down with it or something. And I remember laying in my bed one night after he had already thought, you guys might remember Noah, but he thought he might have already got it. And we were hanging out a lot because, you know, it was locked down and we were sitting there a while. We, <laughs> sidebar, we went through all of the Marvel movies, you know, in order because we had the time. Anyway, um, he thought he got it. And so I'm laying in my bed one night, trying to go to sleep. And I feel this really awful sensation go from my throat all the way down into my right lung. And it was just this terrible burning sensation as if something was like eating it alive or something like that. And I felt a little gross that night, but then I woke up the next day and was completely fine. But ever since that moment, 
there has been this weakness on the right side of my lungs. And I do feel like that has, that's like an effect of COVID of, in, in some way or some, something like that. I'm not saying, I don't, I'm not saying I have COVID now, I don't. But what I'm saying is there is an extra injury in there that's healing during this process. So that's only helping to make this a little more challenging. Okay, that's the physical situation. On the emotional or energetic side, for me personally, and then use it and then talk about this amongst your, this is gonna be a really long video, you guys. But um, on the energetic side, right? There is so much deep, deep, deep healing that's happening for me in a heart space level because I'm actually letting go of all of this shit. And something that I noticed last week, and we talked about this, was that, um, oh shoot, wait, it'll come back to me. Hold on a second. Ah. I finally understand why I've always smoked so much or why I've always wanted to smoke cigarettes so much um, ever since I was a very little kid. And that's because I was using smoking cigarettes as a way to numb the pain that was within my heart chakra, to, to not feel the damage that was in there. And I never really wanted to, uh, to um, admit that to myself. Again, there were times where I've quit smoking, but I've never really actually had the emotional capacity to really get down to the bottom of why I was smoking. And I was quitting for superficial reasons. Oh, because so-and-so says they don't like it or people are getting all kinds of pressure from this person, that person, don't smoke this, that, and then, 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 then. I don't want to spend the money on it anymore. I feel gross, blah, 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 whatnot, what, like whatever. Those are all bullshit reasons, you guys, okay? Straight up and down, bullshit reasons. Just like with any addiction or any problem, somebody's not going to get over that problem just because you told them to. No. If someone's gonna get over an addiction or someone's gonna get over a problem, they're gonna do it because they want to do it, because they push themselves to do it, because they strive to do it, right? Well, for me, now that I've actually started to, and it all happened naturally, you guys. I ran out of my, I ran out of cigarettes, didn't wanna go get more, decided I just wasn't gonna do it, and then all the healing started to happen, but that's when all of the deep aspects of this started to break open for me because I'm, me personally, I'm ready for it. I've been doing the emotional work to prepare myself to get down to the bottom of it. And I, I mean, like, I, I, it has taken me back to literally being a kid. Last night, um, I found myself, I couldn't sleep. And that's when I noticed, I was like, wait a second, it's always been like this for me ever since I was a baby, a baby, you guys, I have always had trouble sleeping. And gr growing, all growing up, I always had trouble sleeping. And I was laying in bed last night and I felt that again. I was back in that place of being a kid, laying in my bed, wide awake, not being able to sleep, but then the other feelings sunk in and I got, and I've sunk back down into that place where I was that scared, lonely, rejected little kid lying in bed, crying myself to sleep at night because I couldn't take it because it was too much because I had no outlet because I had nowhere to go. I had no one to talk to. Right. And so all of that stuff is coming back up now. So that's what's happening for me. So this is what could be translating for the, you guys in the collective here. And remember, we're getting ready. This is all leading up for the Lionsgate portal in August, okay? Everything is aligning. Everything is happening for a reason. It's all lining up, you guys. And it's, <sighs> quite frankly, it's a bit of madness, don't you think? <laughs> so definitely let me know. That was a 25 minute story time, wow. Definitely let me know um, how this is translating for you guys. We're going to get into cards about this for sure. 
But just with that part alone, let me know how this resonates. Let me know what you experienced this weekend. I mean, a lot of you, those of you that are over on Patreon, you know, because we've been talking about this all weekend, but many of you have been saying how you've been experiencing the migraines and everything like that as well. Um, it's been... But it's been comforting to know that, you know, this is not just because I got, I just got sick. No, this is because, and I don't get sick. I very rarely get sick. Okay. Just going to put that out there. I rarely get sick, but it def this time it definitely coincides with the upgrade, the upgrading process that humanity is going through, especially those of us that are consciously walking this path of ascension. Okay. <coughs> You hear that? <coughs> Don't smoke, kids. All right. <laughs> Let's get into some cards. Yeah? Uh, hold on. Let me just... Woo! All right. Let's get into some cards, yeah? And see what we've got, what messages we have for the collective at this time. Here we go. Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, circumstances, and places in which we all need it the most. But also, an extra focus for today, please help me bring forward a channel in a channeled amount of information in terms of the Lionsgate portal that we are heading to and the shift that we experienced this past weekend. so very much spirit all right guys <clears throat> i'm gonna give this five shuffles one Woo. it's hot this is two um oh also as i was doing that i was as i was uh setting the intention there this is three spirit did remind me of the two 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 energy uh, this is four. The 222 energy is still very, very strong. It's helping us to bring balance. It's helping us to ease into this situation. This is five. It's reminding us to, to go slow. Uh, keep a steady pace. Don't try to rush anything. Everything is going to happen in divine timing. We just have to go with the flow. Yes? All righty. So, collective energies here. What's going on for the collective? This, we're heading to the Lion's Gate portal. Uh, we just went through the spike in the Schumann Resonance. We also had the new moon. So what's happening here? What messages do we have for the collective right now? So far, we're starting with the Six of Wands. Okay, this is a big major victory for us. This definitely feels like a personal victory here. It's de this definitely feels like overcoming the burdens. You have the Ten of Wands here, you have the Queen of Cups, and then you have the Knight of Cups. The Queen of Cups was crossing, came out, fell, fell out crossing the Knight of Cups, but it's not a bad thing in this situation. Because your personal victory, which is in direct alignment with your sense of inner union, Four of Wands, okay, I'll go back to that in a second. Uh, but your sense of personal victory that has a lot to do with a sense of inner union that's coming into play, that's coming online here for the collective, has everything to do with you understanding what's truly within your heart and moving forward with that and releasing the burdens, the obstacles that stand in your way, what bogs you down, what burdens you, what makes you feel heavy, what, ke what keeps you in a lower vibrational state, okay? Now, the reason why the Queen of Cups was crossing the Knight of Cups 
is because there is a questioning aspect here. The Knight of Cups is a very val uh, a valiant energy, is a very loyal energy, um, is a very, well, it can be, it, he can be. Uh, but he's a very compassionate and loving and respectful energy. At least that's what I'm feeling in this situation. The Knight of Cups is representing a loyal heart, loyal to your, your people, loyal to your followers, loyal to your family, loyal to your friends, loyal to your community, that kind of thing. Being open hearted with them. Okay. But the Queen of Cups is crossing or was crossing that Knight of Cups energy because she's asking you to identify how it is you truly feel about whatever direction you're moving forward in in your life or what it is you're following through with, what it is you are pursuing, what it is that is within your heart that you are moving forward with. Because in some situations here, what it is that you are moving forward with that is within your heart is actually not the most beneficial for you. It's actually quite burdensome. Ten of Wands. And you're being asked to release that. You're being asked to figure out how it is you feel about that. Come to an emotional understanding, a true emotional understanding of it. And then release what burdens you. Stop the fight. Stop pushing for it is also what I just heard. Okay? That's where your sense of personal victory comes into play. Because you're coming into greater alignment. And because you're coming into greater alignment, that is a level of victory. Do you see how they're interchangeable? They're like one and the same, okay? Six of Wands, Four of Wands. Underneath, continuing at the bottom of the deck, underneath the Four of Wands is the Four of Cups to the Seven of Swords to the Queen of Pentacles to the Fool. Yes, okay. To the Fool, to the King of Wands, to the Lovers, to Judgment, to the Ace of Cups. Look at that. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Because what this is saying, you guys, is you have the Four of Cups, boredom, apathy, no, longing, no longer wanting to be a part of something, no longer wanting to pursue something, feeling bored with something, something not fe having the same resonance with you, the same vigor with you, the same energetic life that it once had for you, not feeling the same. Or straight, like, boil it down. You just not wanting to do it any longer. Seven of Swords is representing, representing a level of deception for some of you. Some of you have come to an understanding of how deceptive something is. Others of you have come to the understanding of how you were maybe cheating yourself by forcing yourself to be a part of something you no longer want to be a part of, that you no longer vibe with. But that realization is coming from this Queen of Pentacles energy that has come online for the collective. And the Queen of Pentacles represents a level of identifying your own sense of self-worth, what it is you actually bring to the table. For some of you specifically, this is definitely translating into you having a better understanding of yourself and what it is you have to provide to the collective or what it is you even wish to provide to the collective. Whatever the collective is, your family, your friends, your children, uh, your community, whatever. Okay, but the Queen of Pentacles is representing a strong understanding of either what it is you have to offer to the collective or what you want to the offer, offer to the collective or both. And thus, you, and thus, because of this, you're letting go. Four of Cups, Seven of Swords, you're letting go of that, standing in your power, standing in your truth, 33, 33 on the counter and taking a leap of faith moving in a brand new direction that you are very, very confident in because it is a choice that you have made that is in alignment with your highest good. It's not an easy choice to have been made. Not an easy choice at all. Because that choice is directly connected to the wake-up call or the ascension judgment that we're being called to here, that we've been working towards here, right? And this is all having to do with self-love, Ace of Cups. And not just self-love, because it starts with the self. And then that love continues to pour out of that cup and flow out to the rest of the world. And the divine just keeps on pouring. There is no limited stock in this unconditional divine love. It just keeps on flowing infinitely. So you can allow your cup to just keep on overflowing because that's going to trickle or flow into the other cups surrounding us, right? It's beautiful. 
So there's a direct translation here, a direct correlation, I should say. By you loving yourself and doing what is doing what it is that's right for you, judgment and the lovers and the ace of cups, okay, your cup now overfloweth. And the more you stay in alignment with this energy, the more your cup will continue to overflow. Right? And the more your cup overflows, the more potential it has, that flow has to reach others. And then that flow reaches those others, and then it influences them to do the exact same thing. Judgment to the lovers. Now, that's why I'm saying, you guys, this, this, this choice, this choice that you've made to take a leap of faith, I'm sorry, let's say it this way. This choice that you've made, the lovers to the king of wands, to take a leap of faith in a new direction or move in a direction that is in greater alignment with you and your sense of self-worth was not an easy choice to make. Number one, we do have the lovers here. And that's always about a choice of vice over virtue, right? A choice of what's in best alignment for you. What will serve your highest good? Those are not always easy choices to make. But on top of that, there is a little bit of extra pressure judgment. The universe is coming through saying it is time to wake up or it is time to get moving, to start putting certain actions or practices into place. You've thought about it long enough. Now it's time to get going. It was not an easy choice, but it was definitely the right choice. Definitely the right choice. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Told you guys, this is going to be a long video, but that's all right. Mm -hmm. I want to get one more pull from this deck to continue the story, and then we'll shift on over to our clarifying section. Yes? So, what's next in this story, please? Spirit. Good. Oh, my God. What's next in the story, please, Spirit? <clears throat> okay. Um, excellent. A little bit of numerology that just popped into my head as I was pulling this next, what's next in the story. First of all, what's next in the story is absolutely beautiful. Before I go any further, you've got three tens here. 10, 10, 10, big time completion, okay? And you did have the world, did the world pop up? No, the world did not pop up yet. It popped up for me actually in a personal thing that I did right before I started. But anyway, a little bit of numerology. We're moving towards the 8-8 portal, the Lion's Gate portal. This year it is 8-8-2021. Uh, 2021. 2021 boils down to a five, right? Eight and eight plus five. Eight and eight is 16 plus five is 21. That Wait, that's three. Where was I going with this? Eight, eight, wait, no, that doesn't line up anymore. When I did the math in my head 30 seconds ago, somehow I landed on a nine, but I don't remember now. Okay, I totally screwed that one up. I don't, oh, oh, because, because I added, mm, okay, I didn't do that right. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry guys. But anyway, we're moving towards the Lionsgate portal. That's a big, big, and that's, that is what's causing this big completion. Okay. Why these are all these things are being completed because that portal is literally going to be us walking through a threshold, crossing the threshold from the old reality into the new. Remember in the beginning of this session, I said, Part of this human resonance energy or this upgrade, this shift, is us shifting timelines, okay? And that's also why a lot of family situations, past family circumstances could be coming up. Like, take me, for example. I've been dealing a lot with the past as a child and the damage and the healing that needs to be done in terms of my own inner child. And so... That's why a lot of this old stuff from the past has been coming up. That's why last night 
I was laying in my bed crying because I felt like I was that little kid again because I could finally feel that because all of the covering up that I was doing by smoking so much was keeping me from feeling that, was keeping me from understanding it, from processing it now so that I could release it and heal it so that when we cross over in this, when we hit this Lionsgate portal, we can cross into, we can effectively cross into this new timeline with a clear energetic slate. So what's next in this storyline? Ten of Swords, Page of Wands, Ten of Cups, Queen of Swords at the bottom of the deck. Underneath the Queen of Swords is the Tower to the Seven of Pentacles. Wow. 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 Okay. Four of Swords, Eight of Cups, Eight of Wands. Okay. What does all this mean, Eric? Well, I would love to tell you. So, you have Ten of Swords. The completion. The completion of the energies, right? So, with this Ten of Swords here, with the Ten, actually, being the completion, yes, things have ended, okay? That's the Nine energy. But when it comes to the Ten... Things need to be completed. How do you complete something? You go through the review process. You make you 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 formulate an understanding of the situation so that you can finally get a, a, a cognitive understanding, file that away in your in your file cabinet, we'll say, and then you get to move on to the next with what you've learned from that previous cycle firmly in your tool belt, right? Completion, ten of swords understanding deeper elements of the past circumstances, the past situations, whatever is closing out for you, whatever loose ends need to be tied up before you can officially step into this new timeline, right? That's your 10 of swords energy. That's your completion. That's your cognitive understanding that is then allowing you to re-identify yourself. Page of wands, change the game, change how you show up, Change what you are in alignment with. Change what you go after. Change what you pursue. Change what you do in your life. Change how you react in your life. Change how you show up in your life, right? Start a new creative process. A new creative journey. A whole new life for yourself even. But that's coming from the perspective of what it is that you've completed from the past. The painful aspects or the painful situations from the past that were literally just stepping stones. Even though they were shitty experiences, they broke you down something fierce. They turned you into a monster of a person that you didn't even recognize. Okay. Honey, that ain't nothing but gravy. That ain't nothing but water under the bridge. Because baby child, let me tell you something, that was nothing but a stepping stone to get you to ultimately where you were destined to be which is what we're stepping into here, page of wands, which is also allowing us to move forward towards greater happiness and happily ever after, we'll say, 10 of cups. Remember, we talked about that on Friday. Oh, happy, uh, happily ever after is for fairy tales, spirit, whatever. What the fuck ever, okay? Call it your fucking happily ever after if you goddamn want to. Okay, you deserve it. Okay, but when we're looking at the bottom of the deck here, we've got the Queen of Swords to the Tower to the Seven of Pentacles. And to me, you guys, this screams you are bringing this tower down yourself. You are actively saying no to whatever it is you need to say no to, Queen of Swords, which is then bringing down the house, the tower, bringing down the structure bringing down the belief systems, bringing down the old blockages. Why? Because you learned from them, seven of pentacles. And you're saying, nope, not today, Satan. We are not going to continue planting these seeds over and over again and expect things to change. We are going to make that change. And why are you doing that? Because you finally have the clarity of mind, four of swords, or you've reached a level of mental clarity, understanding that it's allowing you to recognize what needs to be walked away from. 
in order for your path to be clear. Isn't that awesome? I'm sorry, Eight of Cups to Eight of Wands. The Eight of Wands is what's representing your path being clear. The Eight of Wands represents uh, being able to, to, to see your target and to aim at it and to hit your target without any sort of obstruction. Ain't nothing standing in the way. Clear and open, whoosh, right to the point, right? Excellent, you guys. I really love this for us. This is most likely going to be an hour long video. Oh well. <laughs> okay, let's move forward. I wanna get some clarity. Uh, let's talk about this. What do we wanna get some clarity on first? I wanna talk about the 10 of wands. You have three tens here, 10 of wands, 10 of swords, 10 of cups. Ultimately, you're moving from the 10 of wands to the and the 10 of swords towards the Ten of Cups, yeah? <clears throat> okay, we're gonna give this five shuffles here. One. Um, and I just wanna talk, I definitely, I think I actually wanna focus this clarification on what it is you're coming to an understanding of, of what's burdening you or what has been burdening you. This is two. This is three. This is four. And this is five. Alrighty, we're gonna start with the 10 of wands here. Excellent. And at the bottom of the deck so far, you do have the queen of swords. So what this is saying to me, you guys, is you are very much focused. Look at this, look at this shit. Queen of Swords, double Queen of Swords. What this is saying to me, you guys, is you are, we are extremely focused on cutting out the bullshit. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. And no, I, I know for me personally, I'm actually at the point now where it's like, all right, I've been dealing with this and wallowing in this pity and just being, uh, allowing myself, allowing myself to be burdened to be stopped in my tracks by the past. And I can say at this point, I've been allowing myself to be stopped by the past because I recognize it for what it is now. I see it now. I understand it now. I understand where it's all coming from. I understand now. now yes, I allowed myself to to wallow in it, to be burdened by it, but at the same time, I didn't really understand it the way I understand it now. Double queen of swords, okay? And so now I'm like, okay, all right, let's put this to rest once and for all. Let's stop beating ourselves up about it. Let's stop being such so, so, so awful to ourselves about it, and let's finally cut away, cut this shit away, yes? Okay. So, Ten of Swords, what is this Ten of, I'm sorry, Ten of Wands, what is this Ten of Wands for the collective? What are these burdens that we have been carrying? What are we working on releasing? What is this for the collective, please, Spirit? Whoa, you guys, whoa. Okay, you have the Page of Pentacles at the bottom of the deck which is literally talking about us stepping into a brand new reality. You also have that with the Ace of Pentacles right there, okay? The Ace of Pentacles is talking is representing the brand new pathway that's coming that is being born out of releasing the burdens. All right? The 10 of Wands here in this situation and it's so crazy because I was going to break this apart. Because remember, in the beginning, the Ten of Wands came out with the Queen of Cups and the Knight of Cups, okay? And my uh, originally, what I wanted to do was, with clarifying, I wanted to talk about this Ten of Wands first, and then I wanted to go into, I wanted to like identify that a little bit, and then I wanted to go into how it is you actually felt about it. I was going to talk about the Ten of Wands, and then we were going to talk about the Queen of Cups with the Knight of Cups. But Spirit did that for me. They were like, nope, we're just going to lump it all together. Because what's happening here is, we are literally getting back, getting down to the bottom of how we feel. 
about this Ten of Wands energy, okay? But this is not this is not the same type of Five of Cups as I was saying before, especially like in terms of like my my situation. I'm not going to wallow in this any longer, or at least I'm going to do the work that I need to do to feel what I need to feel so that I can get through it and release it for good. That's the Five of Cups energy, both sides of it, both working through the pain and also wallowing in, in the pain, right? But we're not wallowing in the pain any longer because look at what else has come out here with the Five of Cups, the King of Cups. And the King of Cups represents doing the emotional work. It's not just about, okay, well, how do we feel about this? Queen of Cups. It's like, okay, we know how we feel about it. Now what do we do about it? How do we heal that? And you see how this is the after tarot. You see how the, the King of Cups here is pouring out his cup? If, you're, if it'll focus. You see how he's pouring out that cup? This is literally us saying enough is enough. No more of this. No more feeling this bad. I am not going to continue to hold on to this cup of toxic bullshit, of toxic waste. I'm going to release this now and effectively release the burden, okay, that we've been carrying on our shoulders for thus long and providing us with a new opportunity. I'm curious, and Spirit was just like, yes, Eric, be curious. Okay, what is this Ace of Pentacles then for the collective here? What is the Ace of Pentacles? Just, just give us a little bit, whatever, whatever you want to give us a little bit of. Queen of Swords is at the bottom of the deck again. What is this Ace of Pentacles, you guys? Union with self. Two of Cups. And the Queen of Swords is back, saying, we are going to cut away anything that keeps us from having, from realizing this union with self. That keeps us out of alignment with our own true selves. One last thing that I want to clarify for us, just because I'm nosy, Ten of Cups. So what's the Ten of Cups for the collective? What's the Ten of Cups for the collective? Please, Spirit. Wow. Anything else for this Ten of Cups? What else do you want to say? Oh, jeez. That's a lot. That's a lot. Take them. Okay. The Hanged Man is at the bottom of the deck, all right? Change in perspective. Uh, there was growth in this stagnancy that we've experienced. And now you can, like, definitely for me, I see this for myself, but I, I feel also for the collective, what has happened here is that, yes, you've been in this Hanged Man situation or this Hanged Man state in terms of... Um, Okay, wallowing in the self-pity, I guess. That Five of Cups energy, right? That has kept you stuck and stagnant in some ways. But now you're able to look back on it and say, oh, I get it. Or I understand this now. Or I see why this happened this way. Or I see why things were playing out this way. Or I see why I've been stuck in this way. Change in perspective, no matter how it resonates for you, yes? First card, okay, first card that's come out here in order to clarify this Ten of Cups for the Collective is Death, all right, followed by the Nine of Wands, the Five of Swords, the Six of Pentacles, and the Knight of Cups. Also, you have the Lovers, but the Lovers fell out in reverse, and what this is saying for the Collective is that the choice has been made, okay? It fell out in reverse and it fell face down. It was one of like the last cards that came out and it, it was kind of a struggle, but it came out anyway. This is saying the choice has been made. You're moving in the direction and because of this choice that you've made, you're going through a transformation. You are releasing the fight, five of swords. You're dropping your sword and saying, mm -mm, I'm not doing this any longer. 
in favor of greater reciprocity. You're literally moving away from this Five of Swords energy, this lose-lose energy here, and you're moving towards greater reciprocity. You are sacrificing this Five of Swords, this fight, for greater reciprocity. And that's what your heart is leading you to do. Knight of Cups. Excellent. Excellent, you guys. Okay. All right, I think it's time to close out this reading. <clears throat> We're going to get that <clears throat> from the Lightworker Oracle. Yes? Excellent. Woo! This is a doozy, y'all. A doozy. Here we go. Five shuffles here. One. Two. Three, four, and five. All right, closing oracle guidance for this collective message, please, spirit. Closing Oracle Guidance. There it is right there. Card number 30. Dark Angel. The Dark Angel comes to you with a radical truth. Divine love is always there for you, without exception. Love will never forget you. It will never stop caring for you, even when it seems most unlikely, in fact, especially then. The divine is reaching for you and nurturing you. Even our wounds are ways that we can discover love and divine grace through the healing process. The divine is always helping you remember who you are and find your true joy. When the dark angel appears, you are being given a gift of light, even if it may seem to be a hidden blessing. Mm. Mm. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I love you all so very much. Um, I, I wish you the best in navigating these energies. It's been a rough one for me, so I can only imagine what it may be for other people, but we got this, y'all. Yeah? With that said, I hope you have a fantastic day and I look forward to our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye! <laughs>